my friends. One of my favorite pastime activities is buying Tamiya kits and checking out if they live up to the golden Tamiya standard. Tonight we're gonna put their new T55, in perfect scale by the way, to the test. For whatever reason it's cheaper than their 15 year old 148 kits. Uh, taking a look inside, this seems like one of those models that can be assembled over a weekend, because there's only four sprues. Of course it wouldn't be me if I didn't do something crazy with it, in fact we're gonna give it a bad neighborhood treatment, but we'll get to that. First, let's take a look at the contents. As far as basic assembly goes, there's only one thing to say. It's a Tamiya kit inside and out. Everything is well engineered and parts just fall together. I even started the build by following instructions, which is highly unusual for me. It wouldn't be a Tamiya 148 kit without metal weights that go inside the hull. And while well, it's a silly addition, I'm like, why not, you know? Another beautiful feature is how well thought out some details are. We all know how annoying it can be to remove sprue gates from round parts. Tamiya, they have you covered and they don't require any sanding. Moving on to the rubber padded wheels, these they need some cleanup. Not just to get rid of the sprue gates and some seam lines, but also to simulate wear and tear. Also, most of the time these mold lines are worn down on operational tanks. It's a very small detail, but it adds to the authenticity of the model. But doing it on 10 road wheels doesn't seem like much fun. Um, you know what, let's see how long does it take. Well, not too bad. Tracks have some ejector pin marks on the inside, which need to be filled. Instead of using modeling putty and sanding it down, I find it quicker and easier to fill them with super glue and resin powder from VMS. Then, once the mixture is rock hard, scrape it flush with a sharp hobby blade. Assembling static tracks is something that seems daunting to a lot of modelers, and sure, it's easy to see why. My tried and tested approach makes the process very simple. First of all, make sure you're following the instructions. So, if they say there's five individual links around the idler wheel and six around the sprocket, make sure to do it exactly like that. Personally, I find it easiest to assemble the entire track run laying flat on my workbench, using small amounts of modeling cement. Then, depending on how fast the cement evaporates, I leave them sit for five or ten minutes. Now we can wrap them around the dry assembled running gear. Because the glue has already created a strong bond, the individual links won't break, but they are still flexible enough to be wrapped around wheels. I usually leave them disconnected near the sprocket, which makes the track easy to remove for painting and weathering. However, this time I'm gonna try gluing them together. This way everything will fit 100% as it should, and instead of painting 14 wheels separately, we'll just have to deal with two running gear subassemblies. But okay, this is where the basic assembly ends. Let's now see how the model can be modified and improved. First off, the tank I'm loosely recreating has no fenders. These were cut off with a rotary tool. Well, <laughs> mostly. The rest has to be done with files so we don't damage the kit. Flat metal file to make the fender look like sheet metal and a round file where it's curved. The leftover plastic can be scraped off with a hobby blade, although I find these scraping chisels which I found on eBay more efficient. An easy way of adding battle damage is removing plastic from the inner side, which is not gonna be visible on the finished model. This way we can make the fender more fragile and easy to deform. Of course, using photo etched fenders or scratch building them from copper would provide us with far superior results, but then it wouldn't be a quick build. My model is going to miss most of the fuel tanks and storage bins, so I need to get rid of their locating holes. Again, super glue mixed with resin powder will take care of that. Removing the excess requires some patience, because it's a tight spot and we don't want to cause further damage. So I decided to remove most of the super glue with a chisel, gently scraping towards me and removing it little by little. Then I polished the entire surface with a sanding sponge which should, um, fingers crossed, make them invisible. I guess we'll see once the model is painted in the next episode. Let's now add some heavy metal textures. 
The kit actually has some very basic world beats, but these... they can be always improved. Or replaced completely. But first things first, flame cut marks on the armor plates were made with a hobby blade. It's very simple, you just scrape it perpendicularly. Perpendicularly. And the well texture was punched in with a chisel. A hobby knife would give you the same results, but my fingers were starting to hurt after a while, and the chisel was just more comfortable to use. Everything was then smoothened out with the modeling cement which melts the plastic and makes it all look very authentic. Unfortunately, not all welds can be reworked, because a lot of them are simply missing or they are very small. But before that, I added rough steel textures using Tamiya modeling putty diluted with Mr. Cement S. I kept it rather subtle on the armor plates, you know, just enough to make them contrast with the remaining details. Turret is a steel casting, so the texture can be much heavier here. It's actually reproduced in the kit, but some of it was destroyed while I was sanding the locating holes, and besides, it's a very easy technique that makes your model your own. When this was out of the way, it was time to add the missing welt using Tamiya Epoxy Body Quick Type. Making them from epoxy allows you to go big when needed, or small if you are just creating some tiny welts around sheet metal details, for example. As such, I find this technique more flexible than, let's say, stretch sprue method. I actually made a very detailed video about adding steel textures and flame cuts and weld beads to your models, so check it out if you're not familiar with any of these techniques. One of the most annoying things about T55s and T62s are lamp cages. They're always out of scale and making them from wire is just... not pleasant. But my friend from Offset Scale Models stepped in to save the day with a 3D printed one. The only thing that might seem daunting is removing it from the supports. It can be done with a hobby blade, but I found it easier to use a razor saw. They're on Facebook at Offset Scale Models and they have a bunch of other details and accessories, even small kits, so drop them a message if you're interested. Not everything can be printed though, um, if only it was that easy. <laughs> so I replaced all grab handles and tie downs with wires. If you're drill locating holes all the way through, you'll end up with an indestructible bond and you'll be able to adjust the height very easily. Finally, I drilled out the gun barrel, which was a little shallow for my taste. And that was actually it. I've used everything the kit had to offer. Um, of course, I omitted a few parts because I'm building a somewhat torn down tank, but yeah, it's a nice kit and some armor textures and weld beads can make it look even angrier. So let's give it a protective rebar cage, as seen in Syria. The frame is very simple to make. I've cut 1mm wide strips of copper sheet and bent them around a pen. Then I bent the ends to an almost 90 degree angle. This is where they'll be mounted to the tank. The best part about this modification is that it's done in the field. So it is anything but perfect and there are no exact measurements. We can eyeball the whole thing. And it looks like we've got this tank's attention because it's all Ears. <laughs> Rebar is the only thing where we should pay some attention. A 0.2mm wire, which is the smallest diameter I could find in craft stores, is more suitable for 135th scale. So instead I recycled an old electrical cord, which is full of these, um, I guess, 0.1mm wires, or maybe even less, I don't know. So the way to make rebar for your models is actually the same like making ropes or cables. You bend a long section of wire in half and insert the loose ends into a power drill or a rotary tool. Then you loop the other end over a toothpick or a brush handle and you'll end up with a contraption like this. Then just turn it on and boom, you have a metal rope or a length of rebar. Putting the thing together is almost like making a basket. I started with horizontal rebars, which are the most important, because they should be somewhat equally spaced and handling such a long piece of wire is kinda unpredictable at times. Some tanks actually have cages like this, just horizontal rebars and that's it. Vertical rebars were also bent over a pen, and the easiest way to attach them precisely is to start at the bottom. So you do a few pieces at a time and fix them with super glue in just one spot, so 
that you know you can still wiggle them around. Then you flip the turret around and finish the upper side. Pulling at the rebar with a pair of flat tweezers helps a lot, because this way they'll sit flush with the horizontal cords. But hey, that's not everything, we're gonna fill it with sandbags. This task was tense, because I was running out of magic sculpt buddy. I find it more suitable for large pieces of stowage because it's not as sticky as Tamiya and, more importantly, it's cheaper. Making the basic shape of a sandbag is easy, you can do it with your fingers, however, when it comes to adding finer details, that's not my greatest strength. I added a sewing line before placing them on the model, since, you know, they're gonna be hidden behind the cage. They need to be pressed firmly in place, which will create the illusion of weight, and like I said, this is not my strength, but I tried some sculpting and folding with a silicone brush. Because I didn't have enough body to fill up the entire cage, I added as much volume as possible with 3D printed bricks, which I modeled myself. It's very common to see Syrian tanks armored, so to say, with cinder blocks, bricks, pavement tiles, you name it. While I'm not good at making nice sandbags, I definitely enjoy shredding them. This is really easy, and you can actually create the basic gravel texture directly into the putty with a hobby blade. Of course, I'll enhance the look with real dirt and small rocks once the model is painted, but as a basic shape, this actually doesn't look very bad. Another trick is to roll Tamiya epoxy putty into paper-thin tarps and just tear them apart. Tamiya is more flexible than Magic Sculpt, so it's probably easier. I mean, there's no way for me to try it out since I already spent all the Magic Sculpt. But yeah, I think this is gonna look pretty cool once it's painted and weathered. I just hope the thin putty won't fly off in the wind or something. I found another opportunity for 3D modeling and printing with these fuel line connectors. It's another not very pleasant detail on T55s and T62s, but now the files are downloadable among many others on my Patreon. Bending wires into precise shapes is something I'd like to explore in a different type of video, but one common question I see quite often is, how do you straighten up a coiled wire? Well, my friends, watch the magic happen. That's how you do it. I also added a few missing bolts here and there. I didn't want to go over the top with detailing on this model. After all, my intention was to keep it fun, simple and creative. But, you know, this is one of the easier details to add. Those are punched with a drill bit from tinfoil, so it's super fast. In fact, it's much easier and faster than using a punch and die tool. As I was working on the rebar cage, especially the sandbags, I found myself with lots of leftover Tamiya putty, so I decided to make some tarps from it. All you need is a baby powder which will prevent it from sticking to, well, literally everything, and something smooth like a battery to roll it. Then you do a little chop, 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 and you have a tarp. These can be placed on a tank not just randomly, like filling up empty spaces and making the model look more lift in, but they also help to integrate random stowage bits such as wooden crates. It doesn't have to do anything with realism actually, and in fact it might be totally subjective, but somehow I just like it more when large accessories are placed on a tarp. They also add a different kind of texture to a model, such as next to these 3D printed plastic canisters, which can be found on Thingiverse. However, powdered body doesn't hold on the model at all, so unless you squeeze it into some very deep crevice, it's better to secure it in place with super glue. And that's it, my friends. I think it's gonna be a year since I built that Syrian T90 in 172nd scale and it's nice to build another similar subject. But if you're like, wait a moment, didn't I see something similar in Uncle's collection already? Then you'd be correct, I already built a rebar cage T72 in 135th scale, but that was many moons ago. And unfortunately I managed to break it into pieces while traveling home from a model show and it's just... It's beyond repair, so I guess this will be a smaller redemption with a similar subject, although in a different scale, but basically the same thing. I'll try adding some interesting camouflage and those sandbags, well, 
those will have to be painted with an airbrush. Honestly, I'm not too worried about them, but those tiny bricks tucked behind the cage, that's nightmare fuel in the making, my friends. So I guess the only thing left to say is thank you for watching and thank you to my amazing patrons who make this weekly show possible. Like I already mentioned between the lines, if you're into 3D printing, I have all of my 3D accessories and details available for download on my Patreon page. There's also other benefits if you decide to support the channel. For example, frequent almost daily updates from all my projects, there's literally several thousands of pictures there already, there's also DMs, one week early ad free videos so you could watch the next part right now and also the super nice studio pictures which you can download in full resolution and keep them as your own references or something like that. So yeah, we'll see how the painting goes. There's also a tanker figure included in the kit and while I didn't assemble him yet, <laughs> I'm keeping the hatch open able in case I decide to paint a Russian tanker to look like a Syrian crewman, if that's even possible. I'm not making any promises though. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this week, so until the next Friday, stay safe, stay awesome, stay strong, and build models, don't just collect kits. <laughs> this one is awesome, and it's a subject that served all around the world and still does to this day, so I can only highly recommend it. It's also a very nice model for beginners, and it's ridiculously small considering it's a modern tank, which are usually, you know, rather chunky. Anyway, I'll see you in a week. Cheers.